Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. If you've watched um, many of my previous videos, it will be quite clear to you that a key um, feature of the climate system is that the Arctic is warming at rates much, much faster than the global average. Now, how much faster? Well, the data clearly shows that it's warming uh, between four and five times faster than the global average. Even though most scientists and most uh, papers and most uh, of media, the media reports that you will read show, still claim that it's a factor of two times, you know, that it's twice as fast, and that's hogwash. The reason, with the Arctic warming the four to five times faster than the rest of the planet, that means that the temperature gradient or the temperature difference to the equator um, is greatly reduced. And because it's reduced, the jet streams slow down and become wavier and stuck in place and are causing lots of extreme weather events around the planet. In fact, uh, it feels like we're living in what I call the climate casino. You know, if your city or region that you live in is unlucky and you get hit by, you know, a heat wave or torrential rains leading to massive flooding with lots of infrastructure damage, then you've been unlucky in the climate casino. The, in terms of extreme weather events, it's very clear that because the jet streams are slower and wavier and getting stuck in place, we're seeing massive increases in the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events. And we're also getting extreme weather events occurring in regions where they never occurred before. Now, when we talk about increases in extreme weather events, it's mostly things like heat waves, um, associated with uh, droughts and also um, in other regions torrential rains leading to floods. But it turns out that there's other mechanisms at play in the climate system that means that we're getting more extreme cold events in the northern hemisphere than we did before, at least since, uh, you know, you know, in the last uh, decade or two. And a perfect example of an extreme cold weather event occurred in February 2021 in Western and Southwestern North America, also in Europe and Asia. But in the um, North American event, we had massive extended cold in the southern states in the U.S. and most noticeably that led to the power uh, complete um, failure of the Texas power grid with many people um, adversely suffering. So why did that happen? Well it turns out that the Arctic temperature amplification effect is the root cause of those cold weather outbreaks in North America. And it uh, you need to look at the overall climate system and consider the stratosphere, the, the stratospheric polar vortex. Now often I've talked about these sudden stratospheric warmings where you get uh, lower level air, warm air, for example, thrust upward. An example is over the Tibetan Plateau that warm air goes up into the stratosphere and can break the stratospheric polar vortex into two and allow a, uh, you know, basically a release of cold air from, from the Arctic to lower latitude regions. That's one mechanism. But the mechanism for the cold outbreak in February 2021, which almost knocked out, which knocked out for, for a while the Texas power grid, was another effect from the Arctic temperature amplification. And what happens is when we have uh, snow cover, 
um, lots of snow cover in the uh, in eastern uh, in in parts of Asia and and uh, Europe. Um, then we can get uh, you know, and we also have a, a a strong lack of Arctic sea ice in the Kara Sea uh, region. Um, I mean, we're also getting a lack of it in the Barents Sea and the Chukchi Sea, but in the Kara Sea region, when there's a lack of Arctic sea ice there, there's more water uh, evaporated, there's more uh, moisture in the Arctic atmosphere, and these effects can, can basically elongate or stretch the stratospheric polar vortex. And when the stratospheric polar vortex is elongated and stretched, it can extend into far southern latitudes over North America and cause effects at lower latitudes where you get uh, extremely cold temperatures uh, for extended durations of time. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to go through a recent paper that is looking at these connections between the stratospheric polar vortex and the uh, greatly warming Arctic, the Arctic temperature amplification, and the uh, breakout of cold weather events, um, which has, in which, like I say, the frequency of cold weather outbreaks has increased in, um, you know, in parts of North America and Europe and Asia, and it's because of the this behavior. Um, this strange behavior of the stratospheric polar vortex, which results from climate change, from the greatly warming Arctic. So let me show you um, the uh, paper and the details where you can get this uh, information from. But first of all, this is uh, Earth Null School, and we're looking at uh, today, this is, at, we're looking at 10 hexapascals, so high, very, very high up in the atmosphere and you can see the stratospheric polar vortex here and it's not completely circular it's elongated in this direction okay and you can see it's starting to split into two there's a there's a smaller satellite appearing here um, we can go to uh, 70 uh, hexapascals and you can see the feature here and at 250, of course, is the jet streams. And you can see how there's many regions. I mean, the, the, the jet streams are pretty fractured and uh, very, very wavy. And often they're splitting. So you get a split here into a strong ridge here and a smaller trough here, almost a recombining and, uh, you know, separate whirls and loops sort of breaking off of the jet stream. Very, very mangled jet stream. Um, so, you know, go into Earth, Google Earth Null School, click on Earth, select the upper levels, the 250 millibar, 250 hexapascals to get the jet streams, and the 70 and 10 to get the stratospheric polar vortex to see what it, it is doing. And then you can go back in time, or, um, you know, you can actually go up here and change the date, enter a date. So if we go back a little bit, it gives you the date here. You can just go into the URL and change the date to get the data uh, that you want to look at for any particular event. Now, this is the paper here, Linking Arctic Variability and Change with Extreme Winter Weather in the United States. Uh, but before I go into this paper, what actually happened earlier this year, in February 2021, we had a North American cold wave. So this is cold temperatures in the U.S. from February 14th to 16th, 2021. We had at, at least 278 casualties, $21 billion in damage. Okay, um, this is low temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit in this region. This is between zero and 32 degrees Fahrenheit in these regions here. And it was only these parts of the U.S. that were above freezing um, for that uh, duration of time in February 2021. So severe cold spell. Um, 
and you know they talk about the weakening of the jet stream so so cold could spill down um, into this region from the Arctic the weakening of the jet streams likely to have been caused by a sudden stratospheric warming that occurred in early January okay uh, but then you know it doesn't talk about this elongation the stretching of the stratospheric polar vortex which I'll talk about in the paper so you know it had huge impacts on Canada the US and uh, Mexico and in the US of course it was Texas that got hit by far hit the worst by far so the 2021 Texas power crisis this was February 7th before the crisis started this is February 16th and you can see all of these different gaps in the uh, power grid this is Houston Texas before and after the storm um, huge property damage 20.4 billion in Texas so major power crisis um, three winter storms February 10th to the 11th 13th to 17th and 15th to 20th those concurrent storms caused a massive electricity generation failure led to leading to shortages of water food and heat more than 4.5 million homes and businesses were left without power some for several days okay 210 people killed directly or indirectly some estimates as high as 702 killed as a result of the crisis and uh you know the officials uh including the governor initially blamed frozen wind turbines and solar panels of course but then discovered that the natural gas equipment was not winterized properly froze uh, they weren't able to get natural gas onto the system and that was the probably the major single most major factor which led to the crisis also the grid is pretty separate from other grids in the country um, so it couldn't get enough power from other places according to the electric reliability council of texas ERCOT, the texas power grid was seconds or minutes away from complete failure when partial grid shutdowns were implemented so they shut down the power just in time to avoid a complete failure of the grid which would have taken a lot more time to restore if that had happened so as bad as it was it could have been a lot worse um, and you know it shows the energy generation February 7th the 14th and it shows the energy generation here um, by natural gas um, and by other sources and you know it was the drop-offs in natural gas um, that were a big a big problem okay so you know and then of course the supply chains were messed up you know f uh, food and water shortages the infrastructure damaged infrastructure um, and uh, you know an, a huge emergency situation and they just weren't ready for it they just weren't they didn't expect it the Texas you know it's generally warm there they did not expect a, a huge cold a cold outbreak as, as occurred um, in February 2021 okay so let's go to back to the paper here so this paper came out recently linking the Arctic changes Arctic variability they say and change with extreme winter weather in the United States so they say the Arctic is warming at a rate twice the global average okay well this is see this is absurd this is a scientific paper peer-reviewed just came out and they, they make this statement which is incorrect uh, the very first statement so here we go I showed this last video this is the Arctic warming in red and this is the global warming in the black and if you take the slope here the global warming rate is plus 0 0.20 degrees Celsius per decade and that runs from about 1990 and if from 1990 to now if you take the Arctic warming slope it's 0 0.87 degrees Celsius per decade take the ratio of those two and I calculate 4.35 the Arctic's warming four to five times faster than the overall planet is warming where on earth do they how on earth do they put a peer-reviewed paper and make this claim twice 
okay and you see this over and over from scientists and the mainstream media is just wrong okay whenever you see it pick up uh, a fuss severe winter weather is reported to be increasing across many heavily populated mid-latitude regions and it says there's no agreement whether there's a physical link between the two phenomena. Again, this is an absurd, absurdly um, incorrect statement. You know, the Arctic's warming at four to five times the global average rate. Of course, it's going to affect, uh, you know, regions at lower latitudes. So anyway, what they do in this paper is they look at the stratospheric polar vortex and how it's disrupted and that, you know, there's different ways, like something called wave reflection and stretching of the stratospheric polar vortex, and that's linked with extreme cold across parts of Asia and North America, including the recent February 2021 Texas cold wave. Okay, then they, so they use numerical modeling experiments to look at trends in autumn snow cover and in Arctic sea ice decline to establish a physical link between Arctic change and stratospheric polar vortex stretching and related surface impacts. And they find the connection clear. So the Arctic temperature amplification can lead, is leading to loss of Arctic sea ice in certain regions and also um, increases in autumn snow cover because there's more moisture in the Arctic because there's less sea ice cover. Those two effects combine to cause a stretching of the stratospheric polar vortex and then these cold outbreaks in uh, North America and other places okay so so let's look at what happened um, so they said you know that anthropogenic global warming is projected to increase some weather extremes like heat waves and heavy precipitation events but it wasn't really expected to cause severe winter weather such as cold air outbreaks and heavy snowfalls. That was not expected, and yet that is happening through this stratospheric polar vortex stretching. Uh, you know, contrary to global climate model projections, recent weather extremes have included an increase in cold air outbreaks and or heavy snowfalls across the Northern Hemisphere since 1990 up to the recent past. The most recent example of the extreme winter weather was the anomalous cold weather of January and February 2021 in Asia, Europe, but especially the United States. The U.S. Southern Plains cold wave of February 2021 may be exceptional in the observational record for the region based on the aggregate severity of the cold intensity. It was very, very cold. Cold duration lasted for weeks on end and widespread disruptive snowfall. The collapse of the Texas energy infrastructure could make it the state's costliest natural disaster, even more so than previous hurricanes and at least twice as costly as the entire record-breaking North Atlantic 2020 hurricane season. Okay, um, so they go on and they talk about Arctic warming, Arctic amplification, which is a response to an accelerator of Arctic sea ice decline with the greatest losses observed in the Barent Kara and the Chukchi Bering Seas. So, so the studies show that it's really the Barent Kara part of the um, ice loss that has most effect on the stretching of the stratospheric polar vortex. Arctic amplification has coincided with increasing snowfall and snow cover, a high latitude including across Eurasia during October through January, in part due to the declining sea ice, which increases moisture availability in the Arctic. Okay, um, and uh, so I'm going to go on, and they talk about the sudden stratospheric warmings, which can, which can weaken the SPV, the stratospheric polar vortex, but they also, but the largest, um, but, but they're also saying, finding that it's the sudden polar vortex stretching um, that is having an even larger effect and was responsible mostly for that cold outbreak. And uh, they talk about energy going up uh, to the stratosphere from the troposphere. Um, what do they call it? It's, uh, uh, they call it wave activity flux in the Z direction, which is in the vertical direction. So you can get 
energy moving up from the troposphere up into the stratosphere, break, splitting the polar vortex into two and causing this sudden stratospheric warming, which then weakens the, um, the polar vortex and you can get wavier jet streams and outbreaks in the north with the uh, strong ridges of the jet stream and in the south with direction from strong troughs of the jet stream. But now uh, what, what happens is sometimes these waves uh, that move upward are reflected from the stratospheric polar vortex back into the troposphere. They're called reflective event and that can amplify the pressure ridges and troughs across North America. Okay, uh, so this sudden and the sudden stratospheric polar vortex stretches. Instead of being circular, it stretches, it elongates like a football, and it can extend far south across into the US, uh, for example, and cause the, the, that massive cooling. So let's look at some pictures here. Okay, so here we have uh, some different modes of the, st of the uh, stratosphere, uh, the vortex. So this is at 100 hexapascals, so we can have this mostly circular mode where things are cold underneath. It can be offset from the North Pole, um, where it's colder on one side, so a bit asymmetric. This, this, these percentages are the percentages of time that the atmosphere is in those modes. Uh, we can have this sort of mode where it's off toward uh, Eurasia and it causes there's a warming region over North, North America, northern North America and Greenland. Or you can have it in this mode here where it's, where it's cold over, over the North American side and warm over the Asian side. Or, you know, very, very warm over both regions. And this is the number of days this is occurring each year. 1990 to 2000, 2010, 2020. And we can see this mode is happening less and less often. This, you know, is the Arctic is warming tremendously. This mode is happening slightly less. And this mode and this mode and this mode are all happening more often. So they're happening, the frequency is happening more often. Where, you know, and this is uh, no surprise because we're getting, you know, a, a warming, a warming of the Arctic and that raises the, uh, the, the, the level of the um, air, like the, the air is hotter, it expands. Okay, so we're seeing this type of mode. This is the uh, 500, this is about halfway up through the atmosphere. Um, so these modes associated with the, these at the very high elevation modes this is halfway up the atmosphere so you can see you know similar patterns from here to here this is sea level pressure um okay negative anomalies positive anomalies here as we get the heating of the arctic and this is the temperature at two meters um so we can we're getting more and more of these modes here where we have either very very warm northern north america very very warm asia in the Arctic or just a very, very warm ocean, cold continent type of mode. Okay, so those are the sort of things that we're seeing. And then we're seeing, um, you can see some things happening prior to these stratospheric polar vortex stretching event. Okay, so, you know, 15 to 11 days prior, 10 to six days prior, five to one days, and then the event. So the event is, in this case, very warm, Asia, very cold North America configuration. And this is, so, so you start with a warming here, which then moves uh, this way, you know, builds up here, and this is a colder than normal area, and then that amplifies. So this is at uh, 100 uh, hexapascals. Um, this is that, um, this is the energy moving up from the troposphere up to the stratosphere. And you see more of it moving up from this region and it's less moving up from this region. Um, so if you, if you see these signatures occurring, you can maybe predict when the stretching of the stratospheric polar vortex is gonna occur and give some warning to a place like Texas, for example. Um, this is the 500, halfway through the atmosphere, sea level pressure and the temperature at two meters. So when we get a very, very hot Arctic, then you've got a low, a, a strong low here over Greenland, pressure low, and a high over 
over uh, Eurasia here. So these are the sort of precursor patterns to these events. And then you can also do correlations between uh, what happens, um, you know, so these are the parameters that are looked at, sea level pressure, temperature at two meters, uh, pressure, uh, you know, a height of 500 millibar, height of 100 millibar, and the, the energy moving up from the troposphere to the, to the stratosphere. Okay, and then you can do a correlation to October snow cover over, over uh, Eurasia. Um, and you can also do a correlation to uh, the, the sea ice. Okay, um, the, to uh, d the December Barent Kara sea ice concentration. Okay, December, so uh, you do it to October snow plus the December uh, BK Barent Kara sea ice concentration, sea ice extent. For, okay, and uh, what you can see is that you basically get more snow over parts of Eurasia in the fall and you get less and less because you have less and less Arctic sea ice in the Barent Kara region then those correlate strongly with these warm o warm ocean cool continent pattern which then leads to the elongation of the stratospheric uh, uh, polar vortex and uh, you know you can do um, different uh, multilinear regression MLR models um, you know uh, that here's where you have the uh, different different uh, images going through all of the different parameters if you can you know, do the modeling for snow do the modeling for the Barent Kara sea ice loss etc and you you find you can actually show from this data that as you uh, you know, when you plug in the models that you've got extra snow in Eurasia and you've got uh, um, a lack of sea ice in the Brent Kara Sea, then that leads to an elongation of the stratospheric polar vortex and therefore the breakout of cold air. So these results have important societal implications. First, they highlight an important type of stratosphere troposphere coupling, stratospheric polar vortex stretching that has been mostly hidden because the focus has been on these sudden stratospheric warmings, even though the impact of the stratospheric polar vortex stretching events on North American temperatures can be of greater extent and magnitude, as in the Texas uh, example. Second, the identifier of the precursor patterns to the stretching events can extend the warning lead time of cold extremes in Asia, Canada, and the US. So this is an important predictive thing. Um, third, the analysis is informative for policymakers. Preparing for only a decrease in severe winter weather can compound the human and economic costs when severe winter weather does occur as exemplified during the Texas cold wave of February 2021. So as the climate continues to um, as abruptly change, as abrupt climate system change continues to occur, it throws us lots of uh, surprises. And one of them is these extreme winter weather outbreaks over, you know, for example, the United States, which, for example, crippled the uh, power grid in Texas in February of 2021. So thank you for listening. And uh, please, uh, you know, check out my website, consider donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. I'm heading off to COP in about a week. Um, and I've got some fundraisers for, for uh, to cover offset the expenses. And thank you very much for people that have supported my work and donated. And for a long period of time, people were asking me to set up a um, a Patreon account. So I set up a Patreon account. Some people prefer Patreon. Just it's brand new. I've got three p patrons so far. Um, you know, if you're if you prefer using the PayPal, you can set up a monthly thing there. Or if you prefer using uh, Patreon, um, you can do it there. And I've just started this, and I have some interesting ideas. Uh, you know, you can you can create products like T-shirts, etc you know, mugs, things like that. So, 
you know, I may start doing something like that in Patreon if, if people like that. So this is the paper again. Um, and uh, thank you for listening. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and I, it's uh, lots of uh, preparation to do before, before the COP. Thanks again for listening and bye for now.